sing our first song together. This is on page 41. Do you know who you are? Page 41. I invite you to stand if you're able. Be still and know that I am God. Amen. Well, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. O oh Lord, our Creator and God, we thank you for this day that you have made. Thank you for this time together where we can reflect on our spiritual life, where we can slow down and take a few deep breaths and think about our purpose here in this world in our purpose that we want for ourselves after death. Lord, this life is a preparation. Help us to prepare ourselves for the everlasting joy that you promised to us when we live by your commandments, when we learn to love one another as you have loved us. Amen. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so upon the earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord, forgive us our trespasses. Amen. I invite you to be seated, and we're going to begin with a talk for the children. 
I see a few more outside who are coming in, but um, we can get started. So what I have to show you this morning is this. You know what this is, of course, right? A mirror, and what do we use mirrors for? We use them to see our reflection, right? We want to get a reflection of how we look. Like, how am I doing this morning? How do I look in there, right? Now, can you tell by the reflection in the mirror whether you're a good person or a selfish person? Can you tell by that? What do you think? If I showed this to you, would you be able to tell, am I good, am I bad? Probably not. So we need another tool that helps us to find a reflection of ourselves, and that tool is the Lord's Word. Every story that we hear about in the Lord's Word helps us to reflect upon ourselves, to look like we're looking in a mirror and saying, how does this teach me about myself? What does this show me in relation to how I'm doing? So I'm going to share with you a story about three things that are lost. And this is probably a well-known story from the book of Gospel of Luke. So listen to what is lost in these stories. What man of you having a hundred sheep if he loses one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. What woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is more joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. So a sinner is a word which is someone who's not doing a good job of being nice, not being kind, they might be selfish, and repenting is changing that, changing the way they live. And then he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Amen. So of those who came in a little bit late, we were talking about how we use a mirror to find a reflection of ourselves, see what we might look like. Like I can see you in there. You're all looking pretty good. All right? But we can't tell by looking in a mirror how we're doing inside, how our spiritual life is whether we're becoming an angel of heaven or maybe we're someone who's more drawn to being selfish. So we need the Lord's word that helps us to reflect upon ourselves because we hear these stories and we go, huh, I wonder how that story tells me about myself. So you heard the first story about a man who had a hundred sheep. So we'll pretend this is my staff. And if I have a hundred sheep and I'm supposed to be watching them, how's it yeah, how are you doing? Yeah, yeah. How's that going to go? You think it's possible that a, a lamb could get lost while I'm sitting here like this? Yeah. I have to actually pay attention. <laughs> I have to look and see what is going on. So part of that is paying attention to our life and seeing what, am I really aware of what's going on in my life? Am I aware of whether I'm acting kindly to somebody else or if I'm acting in a mean way to them. So we think about that. That's one story. The other one, there's a woman who had lost a silver coin. So here we have a silver coin, and she lost it. It's probably worth very valuable to her. And so what did she do? 
just goes, oh, I hope I find the coin. No, she, it says she lit a lamp. So we're going to light ourselves a little lamp here this morning because we like to show what that's like. She lit a lamp so she could see, and she got a broom and she swept. She went all around the house looking for that coin, and she cleaned it up. And that's another example of we have to clean up our life. This is getting really large. Let's blow that out. <laughs> if you're not paying attention, things could go wrong, right? So we have to sweep, clean up our act, look around and see where maybe we have lost perspective or lost our ability to see what we're doing and see if we're doing a good job or not, okay? And the last story was a story of the prodigal son. And he goes off, he wants to go have all his money that his father's going to give him and go off to a distant country and he wastes it all. He goes and he parties and does all kinds of stuff, has all kinds of fun in his mind and he has nothing left and he's hungry and sad and alone and he realizes something. He reflected on his life. He looked at his life and said, this isn't good. The way I'm behaving isn't good. The way I'm acting isn't good. I've sinned against my father. I'm not doing the right thing and I'm going to go back to my father and tell him that I've made a mistake. Now here's a hint for you. In the story, the father is like the Lord in our life. If we make a mistake and we go to the Lord and say, I made a mistake, the Lord, like in the story, welcomes him back. Actually, the father was waiting and he's looking for his son and he ran out and he held him and he kissed him. He was so happy to see him. That's how the Lord loves us. So when we make a mistake, we reflect upon that and we go, I made a mistake, I need to do something differently. I need to act differently. So we reflect upon that and go, yeah, I haven't been the nicest person lately, or I haven't been kind, I haven't been helpful, or I keep talking back to my mom and dad instead of listening to what they say, or I'm not paying attention. Okay, so that's what the Lord's Word helps us to do. It helps us to reflect upon ourselves and see how we're doing, just like a mirror would if you're just looking at yourself and going, how am I looking? How are you guys looking? You looking all right? Yeah. So that's why we read the Lord's Word. That's why we come to church and we listen to these stories so we can help learn about ourselves and hopefully can change. Okay? Thank you guys for listening. We will sing our next song now. And that would be on, it's on page 138. Open your eyes. bow your heads for a blessing on the children. Lord, open your word and teach your children the way to heaven. 
May the Lord give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. Amen. And children, I invite you to play outside if you'd like to do that, or you're welcome, of course, to stay with us. And we're going to have our next reading shared by Chuck Ebert. Hundred and thirty ninth Psalm. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before, and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in whole, hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning, and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you, for you formed my inward parts, You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book, They were all written, the days fashioned before me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And if there is any wicked way in me, and, lead, and see if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Thank you. Our final reading is from the Heavenly Doctrine for the New Church from the New Jerusalem and the Heavenly Doctrine 164. If we are practicing self-examination in order to repent, It is important that we examine our thoughts and the intentions of our will and note what we would do if we could get away with it. That is, if we had no fear of the law or of losing our reputation or our job or our wealth. Our evils live in our will. That is the source of all the evil things that we do physically. Therefore, if we do not search out evils in our thoughts and our will, we will be unable to repent because afterward we will have the same thoughts and intentions as we had before, and intending evils is the same as doing them. This, therefore, is what self-examination entails. Amen. Here end our lessons, and blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. Amen.
the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Well, Socrates famously said, the unexamined life is not worth living. So why do you think the Greek philosopher known for his great wisdom said this? Well, the simple answer is he said it because he was wise. <laughs> he's right that the point he's making is correct. If we don't examine our life, we just go on autopilot not really knowing why and not stopping to ask if what we're doing is good or if it makes sense or if it's right. Is it wise? Is it useful? And we are, as he would suggest, wasting our life, in effect. So do you know why you're living the way that you are living? Are you living as you would like to be living? Are you happy with the results? Are you happy with the trajectory of your life? Think about that. Reflect about upon that for a moment. And the Heavenly Doctrine for the New Church says very similar things. They say, without reflection, we know nothing except that we are and nothing else. Like we know we exist, but that's about it. And it says again, without reflection, there is no life. And again, it says, nothing can be learned without reflection. And without reflection, there is no life in sense. There is no life in thought. And reflection is, because the definition might be important, reflection is sight proceeding from things past, hence it is self-knowledge. So it's looking at ourselves, what are we about? What do we know about ourselves? I mean, we don't even know right now that we're breathing, do we? Except that I said, oh yeah, we're breathing. You don't really think about it until you pay attention to it. And actually, we have a choice as to how we breathe if we want to. If we want to pay attention to that, we can choose to breathe deeply, breathe shallowly, or we just forget about it and do whatever happens. And life is like that, too. We have the ability to stop and think about what am I doing and do I want to do it differently? Does life happen to us or do we choose? And the doorway to that is reflection or self-examination, being aware of ourselves. Reflection and self-reflection are difficult in this fast-paced world, aren't they? Because it seems like the goal of everything is to be faster and quicker. We've got smartphones sending notifications, buzzing, pinging, dinging all the time, right? Bing, boom, bing, boom. <laughs> Very distracting. We have the lore and availability of social media at all times. I wonder what other people are doing. I wonder what they're up to. How about what are you doing? <laughs> what am I doing? Why don't I pay attention to that for a little while and see about making some better decisions? And there's always something new and compelling to watch on Hulu or Netflix or Apple TV or whatever other medium you choose. There's so many good programs. So you got to get on it, right? So many distractions. So do we know why we are the way we are? Why we do the things that we do? Why we react the way that we react? Because if we don't know, we'll just keep doing the same thing over and over again. Maybe we're expecting different results. Maybe we aren't. But the unwelcome result will be that we will end up stuck. Whether it's a job or a career, a relationship, a behavior, but if our life is rightly diagnosed, we can make a change. So I want to start with the big picture for a moment. Why am I here? Why are you here? Have you thought about that? Why am I here? Why did God create me and plunk me down on this planet? Why am I here? Do you have any idea? Have you thought about that? <laughs> well, what are the whys of human life? Some of the big whys that the Lord gives us. Well, here's one. He says, the purpose of creation is a heaven from the human race. That's one of the whys. There's, that there might be a heaven from the human race, which we are part of. So reflect on that. If that is the purpose of creation, what's my part? 
Here's another big why the Lord gives us. We are born not for our own sake, but for the sake of others. Reflect on that for a moment. We are born not for our own sake, but for the sake of others. Another big picture idea is to feel the joy of another as joy in oneself. That is loving. Reflect on that. How about the idea of divine providence, that there's a stream of providence that's moving toward happiness? Are we in it? Are we looking for it? Have we got in it yet? Are we still fighting to go upstream against the current because we think we know better? It says those who are in the stream of providence are at peace and they trust and they know that they're constantly being led toward happier things, whatever appearance the means may present. That's a big picture idea, right? No matter what it looks like, I know that the Lord is leading me. So reflect on the big picture, and how does that inform our choices, our life, and our chosen path? What do we see in the mirror when we look at it? What do we see in the Lord's Word? Is our life reflected in a positive way, or do we see that, oh, oh no, <laughs> it's not good. I see myself, and I see, and I hear what I'm supposed to be doing, but it's not looking too good. Well, what about us as a society? How are we doing as a society on this? Do we reflect on where we're going? or what we value as a people? What do we put our focus toward? I think a lot of young people don't have time for reflection, and few of us do as well, actually, because we're always medicating ourselves with smartphones and other things like that. You can always, if I'm bored, I can just always find something to look at. It's interesting, I, I went to a talk on a, someone who studied the human brain, and it's how we, I don't know exactly how to coin it exactly, but he studies the human brain and how it develops in young people and adults and sort of tracks that. And he said, 15 years ago, college freshmen, 13% of them would arrive on college campus and with a short amount of time, they would talk to somebody because they were dealing with a sense of anxiety or stress. So they had enough of that that they would go and seek help. Five years ago, that number was up to 60%, 60%. And his realization was that young people have no experience solving problems because the parents did it all for them. If the children were struggling, they would fix it rather than say, well, well what are you going to do about that? Or how can you figure that out? They had no experience with discomfort because they could always self-soothe on a device. If you're, I don't know about you, if you're standing in line at a grocery store, just, it's too long, I have to wait a minute. I'm going to pull out my smartphone and see what's, what I can look at. Just try standing there uncomfortably <laughs> and doing nothing and just reflecting. It's really hard these days, but that's what we're talking about, just having time to feel that, to reflect. Because we just go from one stimulus to the next, or one stimuli to the next. Well, two main components of this reflection and self-examination are needed so we can get perspective and so we can dig into who we, who we are and work on who we want to become, more importantly because we don't want to get to the end of life without giving that much thought. And we don't know when our life will end. So now is probably a really good time to think about it. So our best example that we have, of course, is the Lord, Jesus Christ. He had a huge mission when he came on earth to save the human race. And there was no end to the amount of work that was necessary for him to do that. But, but he took time to reflect and be off by himself. And it's not usually the most important part of a story, right? When you hear about, oh, someone, here's a really exciting story, and now I'm going to tell you that they went and took a break. <laughs> they don't usually talk about that, but it does talk about that in the gospel, at least 10 times in the New Testament, that the Lord went off by himself, either to pray or to be a part. Here's one quote from Luke 16. It says, he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed, often. He would go off by himself and he would pray. We'll talk about prayer another Sunday, but we go off by himself. So in a general way, do we, or have we built into our life time to reflect? No phone, no media, just reflect. That scripture says, be still and know that I am God. 
I love that quote because it's just so simple. Just be still. If you want to know who I am, the Lord's saying, you've got to slow down. You've got to be still. You've got to take a breath. I think about the story of Elijah after he had destroyed the prophets of Baal. He'd done this wonderful thing for, the, for Israel, very powerful thing, and then he went off into the wilderness, and he ended up into a cave. He's all in the state of despair, and the Lord's voice says, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he comes out of the mouth of the cave, and there's this mighty wind that breaks the rocks in pieces, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake, and fire, and the Lord was not in those things. But after that, there was a still, small voice. Stillness. Still, small voice that spoke to him and actually gave him all the answers to the things he was troubled about. He was going to become king, and all these things that was troubling that were troubling Elijah in a still, small voice. The Lord's voice isn't found in the turbulence of a life too busy to slow down, a noise that's lobbying for our attention 24 hours a day, seven days a week, in the wind, in the earthquake, the fire. Also, in order to reflect, we have to have something to reflect on. And the thing that we need is the Lord's truth. The writings for the New Church say this, it is of the greatest importance to know truths, for without knowledge there can be no reflection, and therefore no reformation. So when we learn truth, it, it's stored up in our mind, or so many lights flashing in our mind that help us when we're reflecting on something or in our life to see what we should do. You can't tell how you're doing in relation to the truth if you don't know what the truth is. Or you can't know who the Lord is if you don't know who he is by learning the truth. It's like trying to see your reflection without using a mirror. The truths of the word are so many mirrors in which the Lord is reflected. We read that every single truth of wisdom is, as it were, a mirror in which the Lord is seen. And again, truths compose the mirror showing who God is. Think about that practically. It's hard to, to love or be inspired to follow someone if you don't know anything about them. So we do spend, when we do spend time in the Lord's word, the Lord can then shower us with insights from those truths. It's about the story, if you, if you know the story of the children of Israel building the tabernacle and they set up the priesthood and they had Aaron and he had this breastplate that he wore as the high priest, and it had these 12 precious gems on this breastplate. And when he would inquire of the Lord, the gems would flash in different ways, sort of giving the answers that, for what that inquiry was. And what that pictures is how the truth flashes in our mind and, and gives us answers, just like it does in that story. So reflecting requires a lifting up of our minds above the busyness of life, to the mountaintop, and truth helps us with that as well. Now, Emanuel Swedenborg wrote these things called the rules of life. That's not part of his published works, but it's interesting that he came up with these four different rules. And the first one is diligently to read and meditate on the word of God. Notice that first rule, read the word and meditate on it. Think about it, dwell on it, spend time with it, meditate, reflect. With that in mind, I want to read part of Psalm 1. It says, Blessed are those who walk, not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but their delight is in the law of the Lord. And in the Lord's law they meditate day and night. And they shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever they do shall prosper. It's a beautiful picture of what that brings to us when we reflect on the word. We go to it. The other big part of this is checking in on how we are doing in our own personal self-examination and repentance, our regeneration. And we're told we don't really like to examine ourselves because it's uncomfortable, <laughs> because we find stuff we don't like. But we actually love to look at other people and say, oh, that's their problem. And it's easy for us to do that. It's difficult for us to examine ourselves. But in Scripture, it invites us to give that up. Matthew 7 says, Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, Let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. So we've got to look at ourselves. 
And if we don't examine ourselves, we, we end up examining everybody else, and that's damaging to them, it's damaging to us. And when we reflect on our own life, what we gain besides perspective is some humility. We realize, but for the grace of God go I, like, I'm no better than them. I have issues, I've got to work on them. So reflection is a sight proceeding from things past, hence it is self-knowledge again. So what we're trying to discover is ways that we can make changes. What is it that I need to work on? What can I change? That word repentance is from a Greek word, metanoia, which means to change our mind. So can I change my mind about how I'm going to live and what I need to do? So when it comes to self-examination, personal reflection, what do we look at? Well, a simple thing is to look at our words, look at our actions. What do we say? What do we do? That's an easy one. Maybe we don't always, can't always tell that those words have an impact or that those actions are, have an impact, but they do. But that's the first place to look. Second place to look is our thoughts. What do we think about? Now, this is a little bit tricky because all of our thoughts are flowing in from the spiritual world, from heaven or hell, from the spirits there. So the question is, what thoughts do I like to dwell on? What thoughts do I like to entertain? What do I find compelling and interesting? What do I delight in? That's why they need careful consideration, because things are flowing in all the time. So we think about our words, our actions, our thoughts, and we think about our intentions as well. What are we striving to do? You know what it's like when you do something and someone says, oh, you did that for that reason, and you go, no, 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 I, I actually meant this. We know what our intentions are. It's what we were hoping to have happen. It doesn't always work out the way we hope but well, we have to examine what, that is, what those are. What is the target that we're aiming at? And the fourth thing is interesting, too. It's like, what would we do if no one would ever find out? <laughs> That's the best way to, to see what's going on with your life, is what would I do if I would never get caught? What do I consider to be allowable? Or would I do it if I wouldn't get in trouble with the law and if my reputation wouldn't be harmed in any way? What would I do? It's a really interesting and revealing question to look at in ourselves is what would I do? So we need to ask the Lord to help us with this. And the Lord, it's interesting, that's, that Psalm 139 that Chuck shared with us this morning, all of those different things about our life are reflected in that Psalm. We ask the Lord to help us and it says, Lord, you have searched me and you know me. It's like we need the Lord's word to examine ourselves. You search me, you know me. You know my sitting down, my actions, my rising up, another action. You understand my thought afar off, my thoughts. You comprehend my path, the way I'm going, my, my lying down. You are acquainted with all my ways, for there is not a word on my tongue. But behold, O oh Lord, you know it altogether. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart me and know my thoughts and see if there would be any wicked way in me. Look at my loves, look at my intentions, look at my words, my thoughts, my way. So I invite you, encourage you, encourage us all to make time to reflect, to examine, to meditate. And you know what? You probably know this, but I'm going to remind you that there is a commandment about this. <laughs> There's a commandment, one of the top ten, that says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. In it you shall do your, no work. The Lord is saying we need to set aside time for reflection. If you think about holy things, think about what matters. Because otherwise we get caught up in that rat wheel and we just keep going and going and going. wonder why we're stressed. We wonder why things aren't working out. We wonder why we're not having a good time. And you know that breaking the Sabbath commandment was punishable by death in the Old Testament. If you worked on the Sabbath, they would stone you to death. They took it very seriously. And I think, in effect, for us, it's saying, well, this is kind of the net effect for us spiritually. If we're not taking time, we're dying spiritually. So we're not meditating on matters of eternal life. You can't change course if you're going too fast. Try that on your bike. Try it in your car. It's just hard. You just go off the road, have an accident. So task this week is to seek first the kingdom of God 
And where is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is within you. And it requires self-reflection. It requires us being curious. So take time, make some time, go on this great journey, the greatest journey of our lifetime, that journey within to figure out where am I going? The Lord is there. The Lord is there to help us. We just need to do the work. Amen. Let's bow our heads for a moment. Lord, we pray that you help us to slow down this week and to reflect, to look at our lives, see where we've been and see where we're going, and take stock of how we're doing. And go to you and ask for help and make some necessary changes. We don't need to do it all, but we need to do something. But we won't know what that is if we don't stop. Slow down and hear your still, small voice speak to us. Help us to be still and know that you are God. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. I invite you to stand if you're able for the closing of the word. Now we'll sing our final song, which is Shine on Us, which is a handout that you have with your bulletin. to find our way.